the next mental model is to realize that not all refractory VF is actually refractory to proper defibrillation. In fact, not all refractory VF is refractory. Most of it is recurrent. We just don't see the restoration of sinus rhythm go back into VF because we immediately resume chest compressions after the shock. But what do I mean by proper defibrillation? Well, if you think about where the heart sits in the chest, if you really want a transventricular current, then you can see that you have to put the lateral pad on the lateral chest wall in the mid-axillary line. Now, lay people, when they're putting an AED on, will follow the instructions on the AED. But most pictures on AEDs, in fact, almost all of them, have an anterior picture. You can't see the sides, so they put a picture of the lateral pad here. And studies have shown that in most of them, it's more than five centimeters from where it actually should be. The brilliant dose VF study that showed superior outcomes with vector change defibrillation or double sequential defibrillation compared with anterolateral, published in the New England Journal, had this diagram for their control group, the anterolateral group. Now, I very much hope this wasn't how they placed the pads, but even the New England Journal is putting pictures like this. All right? Healthcare providers aren't any better than lay people, it seems. They took 101 doctors, put them in simulations, they had to put defib pads on. Most of them put it way too anterior over the left chest. It's not a complete waste of time, OK? If your spleen is fibrillating, do this. <laughs> if you have a dysrhythmic nipple, do this. Otherwise, my challenge to you, if there's only one thing you remember from my talk, the next time you see patients with defib pads on, have a look. And don't be afraid to move them and show people where they should be.